Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new, I'm Lois and I talk all things planner, stationery, and other random thoughts about midlife parenting, midlife in general, but mostly planner related stuff. So welcome back. If you're uh, new, welcome to the channel. And I thought I would spend a few minutes talking about this stack of goodness here. This is um, all of the things that I'm considering for 2022. So I'm gonna pull things out of the stack here, out of off camera and just kind of go through the stack. Um, so as you may know from watching earlier videos, if you've been watching my other videos, right now I am currently using um, A6 Hobonichi English version. So I bought another one for next year because this one um, right now, the size is working really well for me. I really like the A6. I've been using an A6 rings planner since August of last year. Transitioned into a weeks for a few months in the winter and then back into the A6 rings for most of 2021. And so I wanted to get out of the rings and went into an English 2021 um, Teco and I'm really happy with it. Techo, not Teco, Techo. And so I bought another one for um, 2022. I also bought this uh, notebook, which is just the Hobonichi notebook. Um, it's just grid paper. And I just thought I would have this as a supplement if I needed it. Um, I don't have any particular plans for it as of yet, but um, yeah, I have it. One thing I think is neat about this, if you're not familiar, and I don't know how well it'll show up on camera, but it's divided into four sections and the grid color is different depending on the section. So the first section is kind of a rusty red, then it goes into a blue, then it goes into a green, and then it goes into kind of a purple. So that's kind of neat that it's just a very subtle distinction between the four sections if you, for some reason, wanted to divide up your notebook. Um, so that's option number one. Probably what I will end up using is this um, based on what I'm doing right now and what I'd like, but um, that's option one. So then option two is the um, Hobonichi Weeks. And if you, uh, I'll link above my flip through of my 2021 setup for my Hobonichi Weeks. I have a Mega that I'm using right now. And so I bought another Mega and I've always had blue um, Hobonichi Weeks. So I got another blue one. This is, I think it was Ocean Blue, I think is what it was called or Sunny Blue, something like that. But I thought it was a really pretty bright color. So I got that. I also got this one that is the Liberty Fabric. Um, and I really got it just because it was so pretty that I almost couldn't resist the color. Um, but I'm thinking about maybe um, seeing if my mother would like this um, and gifting this to her. I've been trying unsuccessfully for years to get her hooked on Japanese stationery, so this might be the secret. Um, one thing I wanted to show you in here that I thought was really neat, I'm sorry for the plastic noise, but in the cover itself, in the bag, the packaging, there are two pieces of plastic on the front and the back. Um, and so when I saw that, I'm like, heck yeah, I can use these for pencil boards or washi tape holders or post-it note holders. So if you end up getting um, one of these, I would strongly suggest you save those. But just to walk through really quickly, if you're not familiar with the setup of the weeks, um, it has a month at a glance and then it has a weekly horizontal view with a note page that's grid. And then in the back, it has um, blank grid pages. The difference between the regular weeks and the mega is the number of notes pages that are in the back. This one I think has close to 200 and I'm just ballparking that out. I'm sure that there's a specific number, um, but I know it's double what's in the regular weeks. So, I mean, realistically, this could probably do me if I'm not doing daily journaling and I decide I want to use a week's. Um, but if I were going to be doing daily bullet journaling in the back, I'd want the mega like I've had in the past. So um, that is option number two for what I'm doing or considering for 2022. I also got a new pencil board um, because I lost my pencil board from last year. 
So those are my Hobonichi purchases um, and considerations for next year. The third thing that I'm looking at is this, and this is a, um, a Jibun Techo. I got this from Jet Pens, um, and this is the Days. So they have a weekly version that is a vertical week on two pages, and then this is the daily. They came out with this last year as a brand new offering, and I missed it. I wasn't able to get it in time, so this year I jumped on it pretty quickly because I didn't want to miss um, the opportunity. This is an A5 Slim, so it's a lot bigger than the A6 um, Hobonichi, obviously a lot bigger. Um, A5 is double an a6 right right so you can see here you know if you were looking at what an a5 would be it'd be twice this and it's that much wider so this is an a5 slim and um it's the daily so it comes in two books you get one for january to june you get one for july to december um, and then you get this plastic cover that has a pocket in the front it has three card pockets here and then in the back it has a slip pocket and a pen loop which i really like um, that they provide the pen loop um, let me just walk you through this because this is one i think that you know you may not have seen before um, and i i really like it i'm actually very seriously considering using this next year instead of the hobonichi um, i just don't know if i need this big of a planner but i really like it and i may end up using it for work instead of um, personal I don't know we'll see so the first thing it has is the the big year at a glance so you got 21 22 and 23 then you go into and this is one of the things I really like about the Jibun Techo is there's a lot of thought just like with Hobonichi there's a lot of thought in the front um, pages and in the organization pages and things like that that they provide so they have this a whole year at a glance which I like um, and there are one two three four five one two three yeah one two three so if you don't count this column there's five columns if you count the one with the kanji characters in there then it's six columns um, that you could use for like a tracker or something like that or to note important dates the weekends are in blue and red so Saturdays are in blue Sundays are in red and holidays are also in red um, the next thing you see is this is this says my dream my event I would repurpose these but I really like the fact that they've already got a lot of this set up in the front that I could repurpose for some of my collections or um, trackers, planners, things like that. Then you get a, a hundred wishes. So this is like the my 100 in the Hobonichi, except for it's actually more than a hundred because you can see that there are you know, a few extra listed here beyond the hundred. So this might be where I would track books or something like that for the year, although who are we kidding I would not read a hundred books in a year but anyway there are a couple more list pages so very similar to the hundred um, pages you get one two three three of these list pages so as I was flipping through this I was thinking well that's cool I could have one for my books I could have one for movies I could have one for TV shows I could even use each page because I don't think I would have a hundred TV shows or 100 movies so I could have one page be movies and one page be TV shows and still have plenty of room um, to track the in the the weekly view or the weekly planner um, that I've used in the past they did have like places to track you know specific things that would say like movies or whatever books um, and this one they've made it more generic which I really like because then you can make it whatever you want so after you have the list pages then you go into the monthly views and again i just think this is really clever they've got your month at a glance here they've got your small monthly previous and next two or previous current and next calendars here a place for you to write some tasks and then down at the bottom is a tracker so you don't even have to add another tracker um, tip in or figure out another way to do a tracker which then leaves this page wide open for something else if you want to use this for something else um, you know if you're tracking things down here then there's all kinds of options you could do so you get the whole year in monthlies up through um, June 
So here's May, here's June. Again, Saturdays are in blue, Sundays are in red, and then holidays are also in red. So for example, here's uh, I, probably a festival and it's because it's three days in, in red, some type of holiday. Um, and then after that, it moves into another thing that I think is very well thought out. You have July through December in these half page monthlies. This is only in the January to June, but the nice thing is it's allowing you to plan ahead for the second half of the year so you don't have to carry your other book around with you. And then when you're ready to make the transition, all you have to do is move things over. So there you go, January to June. And then you jump right into the dailies and you'll see that the beginning of each month, there is a page, um, almost like a, a um, the page in the Hobonichi that says, uh, you know, like October or November or whatever. In, in the Hobonichi, it's just a blank page. In the Jibuntecho, it's got sections here. I did look some of these up in Google Translate and it's things like what went well, what didn't go well, what do I want to do different next month, what are my goals and priorities for the month, um, finances, things like that. But it's divided up into sections but the grids um, grid lines are, are faint enough that if you wanted to, you know, use it across, you could, or just use it as a, a note page. But I think that's really nice. I really like being able to, as you know, if you've seen my um, ring planner reviews, I like to have a page at the beginning of my month where I keep track of priorities and projects and things like that. So if I were using this for next year, that's exactly what I would do here. I would list my priorities here and maybe projects down here with next actions on the projects. Um, and maybe have a section here for you know financial things that would be, you know, like, when you have to renew your insurance or you have to take the dog to the vet or get your car tags or things like that that don't happen all the time and you want to not forget you know maybe that would be something you'd put here then transitioning over to the dailies i'm just going to bring this up just to kind of give you a better view so you can see here at the top there's a place for weather and a little uh, section for uh, notations and then this is the the um showing you the the week you know prior days and days coming up and then the current day is highlighted here with a little circle and you've got your timeline down the page the colored part of the timeline is dark when it's dark and then the non-colored part is when it's daylight of course it's based on japan i don't know that it would be 100 percent accurate in the states but it's close enough and then over here, you've got a series of check boxes that you could use. So this could be your to-do list and this could be your timeline for uh, scheduled activities. It's open at the top here. So if there's something you wanna note for the whole day. And then down here at the bottom, um, there are some little symbols for, <clears throat> excuse me, mood or um, you know what's going on if you wanted to journal a little bit. For me personally, I don't have enough time-bound activities personally all of that gets tracked in my work calendar in outlook so i would probably use this for my task list and this for journaling or notations and just use that center column as a divider from that capacity but i like the way it's laid out it would be a little bit of an adjustment from the way I'm using my current um, Hobonichi pages because the Hobonichi pages are wide open. And so I tend to, to just, um, you know, write um, straight down the page um, what I have going on. So you can see the English doesn't have a timeline other than 12 o'clock. Um, if you are using the uh, Japanese version of the Hobonichi, there is a timeline over here but um, I think I could make this work and especially having the extra real estate of the full day there's plenty of room for journaling uh, tracking meals whatever you wanted to do so it's just all of the days for the month are together again your weekends are colored which you know if I had my druthers I would have it all be monochromatic but it's not a deal breaker for me I think I would get used to it and then when you get into the next month Here's the end of January, and then you've got that landing page for February, and you've got your February pages. So that goes all the way through the year in the same format with your monthly landing page. There are two bookmark ribbons. I don't know if you saw that, which they always irritate me. I usually end up 
tucking them away and not using them. Um, and then in the very back, you have just a few note pages, not very many. It's one page front and back and one page the front. To me, I would love to have had a few more, but the, um, the Kokuyo folks do provide a notebook um, that is really, really thin, kind of like the uh, Hobonichi notebook that I showed you in my A6 that is designed to slip into the cover here and not take up a lot of space and add a lot of bulk. So if you needed more um, note taking or for, you know, like things you weren't already using the front pages for for your collections, you could use one of those. This is the uh, July to December and it's, you know, basically the same layout. It just doesn't have that um, half page months. So all of the other things, the lists are in here, the monthly view, and it just goes through the end of the year. Um, and it, it, oh, it does have, oh, there you go. So it has uh, the first couple of months of, so January, February. Yeah, that's all, just January and February of 2023. So at that point, you know, hopefully you'll, you'd have your next year. And then it starts into July and goes through the end of the year. And then in the back of this one, again, you've got two grid pages and a looking back on 2022. So a place for you to reflect maybe a memory um, or something for each month. This is numbered one through 12 and then an overall. And then the end of your page, which is, you know, kind of like if this is found who do you contact? So this is option number three for next year. I am honestly torn between the three and which one I'll use. I really like the, the size of the Hobonichi. I like the pattern of this and I like the layout of this. So if I had, you know, a magic wand and I could mix all this up together, that's what I would do. I'd have one that had this pretty cover, but it was this size and had the extra features that this has in terms of the trackers and the monthly view and all of that. Because I don't have a magic wand, I'll probably pick one of these, but if we're honest, I'll end up probably using all of them next year. Um, that's just what I do. I like to play in planners and jump around. Um, but yeah, this is the, this is the stack for next year. And I think the fallback when all else fails and the world goes sideways would be going back into my rings. But I really think I want to use, uh, one of these, probably this or this for next year. And I'm still debating on how I could use a Hobonichi Weeks in my line up without making it a planner. Maybe it's a, um, a line a day type of memory here where I just put a memory here and maybe use this to put some pictures and um, journaling. I don't know yet. I'm still thinking about it because I like the weeks so much, but um, I just, the narrowness when I'm writing in it, this wider page feels better in my hand. So that is the lineup for next year. Which one will win? I don't know. We're going to have to um, wait until next year and see. Um, but I just thought I would share this with you. So if you have any questions about the Jibun Techo, let me know. Like I said, I found this on Jet Pins. I ordered um, my Hobonichis directly from Japan, from the Hobonichi website. Um, I just have found every year it's less stressful for me to do that because then I know I'm going to get what I want. I don't have to worry about out of stock uh, issues with U.S. retailers. So thank you for watching. I uh, would love to hear your comments or thoughts um, and any questions that you have. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments what your plans are for 2022 if you know. And if you don't, what are you thinking about doing and um, what are you, you know, worried about in terms of your planning for next year? Um, I'd love to hear that and talk about that in a future video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.